Hey, what is up, comic book fans, and happy new comic book day. Well, technically it'll be new comic book day by the time this video drops. Uh, Marvel sent us a couple of gifts in the mail like they do every week, so I thought I would go over a few of the reads and kind of show you guys what's coming out from Marvel in case you were wondering and, you know, before you go spend your hard-earned money. So first up we have Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one, written by Ethan Sachs with art by Paola Villanelli. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It, it was a good story. It takes place kind of right after The Empire Strikes Back happens. Uh, it really kind of features Valance, uh, Bosk, and Boba Fett, which is going to be a lot of fun. They, I don't want to say they team up because I think they're all, you know, man for themselves. They're bounty hunters, you know, each man for their own. But I think they're going to kind of have to work together to gather some of these bounties. And, and so there's going to be a lot of fun had along the way. Um, not only that, but Dr. Afra makes an appearance, which I was a really big fan of that character in the earlier Marvel stuff too. Uh, the art throughout is pretty solid. I, I really enjoyed it. Colors by Prianto. Uh, it was a really good book. Um, let me kind of just open it up here and kind of show you guys just some of the art pages. With There's a lot of action in this book. That is one thing that I did thoroughly enjoy was all of the action in the title. Um, it was very... Very much action-packed, and you kind of dive into a lot of the different stories and things um, of the different characters. Kind of gives you a little bit of backstory on some of these characters and things as well. Like, for instance, here's Bosk trying to take out his, his black Wookiee there, and then Dr. Aphra's like, no, that's not going to happen, because I have information, and you want information, so therefore give me back my Wookiee. And then, of course, you have the glorious Boba Fett. So, overall, I did really enjoy the story. Um, not quite as much as I enjoyed Greg Pak's Darth Vader, um, which Darth Vader 2 is also going to be out as well, so you need to grab that one. Um, and then there's like the ongoing Star Wars and things that is out. And Dr. Aphra is actually getting a new solo series, effective April 1st, so that's going to be coming out, and that's going to be super exciting. Um, so while I did enjoy the book, wasn't quite as good as I enjoyed Vader, but we'll see where it goes. It's only issue one, a lot can happen. Uh, next up we have Marvel Snapshots Sub, I say Submariner, but I think I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because there is actually, um, a part in this book where he rescues a kid, and the young kid goes, thanks, sub, and then they wrote it out, so like, it's like idiot speak, they wrote it out, submariner, and I was like, is it really submariner this whole time? Uh, I think Kevin Smith even said submariner, and I go, that's dumb, it's submariner. I don't know, to me it'll always be submariner, maybe it's just from the Midwest where I'm from we say submariner, I don't know. But uh, either way, so submariner, submariner. Uh, Marvel Snapshots, written by Alan Brenner, uh, art by Jerry Ordway, which is awesome, awesome art. Really gives a really nice classic Golden Age feel to it, but like the details of today, if, if that makes any sense at all. And the coloring and stuff too really kind of gives it that Golden Age feel. Uh, the story actually, it's kind of a one shot obviously. It takes place in 1943, so it is like, you know, during the height of World War II. And, um... The book, is, it's, it's interesting. It's a very interesting take um, on this. So basically, uh, you know, Submariner uh, has been gone, Namor, has been gone for six years during war. Um, he comes back um, and he sees the girl that he's been, you know, was, was dating and stuff. And he gets to see her again, uh, Betty. And they kind of go out. She wants to take him out and show him a good time and... You kind of discover early on in the in the issue that uh, he had Namor has uh, PTSD from the war, and he kind of starts having some flashbacks and things. And then this Nazi robotic shark shows up, and they just start brawling in the middle of an amusement park. Um, the action scenes are really fun. It like I said, it definitely has that golden age feel to it. Um, not only that, though, but you got some really cool parts with, like, Captain America and, you know, the original Torch and Toro and, oh, excuse me, and Bucky, um, you know, like the Golden Age, uh, you know, World War II era versions of these characters. So 
Uh, that was a lot of fun to see. The art was awesome. I loved it for the art, if nothing else. And you have this amazing cover by Alex Ross. Um, so if for nothing else, I would recommend picking it up for, for the art. Because the art was pretty awesome throughout. Story-wise, if you're a Golden Age fan, you're probably going to love it. Uh, but for a lot of the younger crowd that maybe Golden Age isn't really their thing, um, if you do pick it up, I'd say pick it up for the art. You're probably not going to... You're not going to be able to relate to the story very much, but here is some of the art throughout it that I was kind of hinting at when I was saying that the art looked really good. Really had that kind of classic, um, you know, golden age sort of feel to it, yet a lot of detail, like modern time stuff. Um, there's a lot of line work, a lot of details, as you can see in there. The faces aren't simple. There's a, there's a lot of line work in it that I love. Especially with the water and the backgrounds. Um, they look really good as well. So, um, but here you can kind of see the first page where you start to notice that uh, Namor has PTSD. And he's kind of going through some stuff. So, um, I enjoyed it though for what it was. Uh, like I said, nothing else. The art. The art was really fantastic. Can't speak enough of that. It does appear that the next issue that's going to come out is going to be focusing on the Human Torch. Uh, whether or not that's going to be... Uh, Johnny, or is that going to be the original Torch? If I had to guess, I'm going to say it's the original Torch, but we'll see. Also, it looks like they're going to be dropping Taskmaster number one. Effective, uh, when does that one drop here? April. So next month, Taskmaster number one is going to be dropping, just to tie in with the Black Widow movie, of course, so that'll be fun to see. Uh, next up, we have a story that I did thoroughly enjoy. I loved it a lot, actually. Um... My ultimate pick of the week is going to be X-Men number 8. I'm not going to spoil anything in regards to X-Men number 8, other than make sure you pick it up and read it, especially if you've been following X-Men. Uh, you get to see some classic X-Men baddies. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, but this one's a lot of fun. Cable number 1. I uh, really, really enjoyed this one. Written by Jerry Dugan. Uh, art and colors by Phil Noto. Uh, this one was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, it happens during the same time frame as like what's going on, um, with X-Men and stuff. So it's in that exact same, uh, time frame. So Krakoa has absorbed another island, so to speak, which has happened earlier in, uh, earlier issues and things. So it does take place in the same timeline. Um, but you get to kind of see this like classic fight between young Cable and Wolverine in the beginning. Um... And then, you know, Silver Samurai says, oh, mutant supremacy, because ultimately Cable tricks Wolverine and, and he wins. Um, so it's kind of fun to see young Cable again. He's kind of carefree. He doesn't have that gruff and rough attitude like the older version of Cable does. Uh, there's even a couple of jokes that are thrown in there um, in regards to his younger self uh, versus his older self, which are kind of fun. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really fun book. Um... I'm interested to see where it goes because it left quite a bit of a, it, it left a really nice cliffhanger. I'll just leave it at that. Um, so I'm definitely interested to kind of see where this ties in, especially with young cable. And, you know, obviously we, most of us that re read this stuff, we, you know, we grew up with the older cable. So this is kind of interesting to see a different take on him. The art was really bright and vibrant. Um, there's a reason why that lion looks the way it does. Don't think like, oh, that's weird art. That looks like a Muppet baby. There, there's a reason for that. Um, that is actually what he looks like. That's just a, I guess you could say a vision, a hallucination, if you will. So don't mind that. Um, but, uh, there's some really cool lines in here that I like from Young Cable. Um, basically Wolverine takes out one of his big guns. And so now he's just gonna, I mean, it says right here on the cover, instead of a big gun, carry a big ass sword. Um... Well, I guess that one actually doesn't say that. Sorry. That one actually does speak softly and carry a big-ass gun. But there's a joke in here later on about him carrying a big-ass sword. Um, so, yeah, it was it was really good. Kind of had a, I don't know, a classic fable storyline to it that, that was interesting. Um, but, yeah, I don't really, I don't want to spoil anything. Like I said, it has a nice little cliffhanger at the end. I do recommend it. Cable number one is definitely a pickup that I would recommend. Um, also, like I said, X-Men number eight, uh, X-Men number eight was, it was good. Hickman's killing it. And 
yeah, I haven't been a big X Men fan, you know, modern X Men fan for a while, but I'm loving, loving what Hickman's doing right now. So be sure to pick up X Men number eight. Be sure to pick up Cable number one. And uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunters. I, I do recommend that one as well. Submariner, Submariner. Depends on your style. Um, all of that being said, also please be sure to like and subscribe. We're pumping out daily content, mainly Mike. I've been really busy with other stuff, but um, you know, Mike has been pumping out daily content, so be sure that you like and subscribe and, and click that notification bell so that way you're aware every time something does come up. Not only that, but please be sure to check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the hardcover comic. Or as little as $1 a month is going to give you entries for omnibus releases, things like that, that we're going to be doing, giveaways. Um, we do have some people starting to subscribe right now, and it's been it's been really cool to have those people join. So thank you for everyone that has subscribed lately. Uh, we're going to be doing some giveaways. I am going to be giving away digital comic codes and things for the stuff that I get from Marvel. So these ones that all have digital comic codes, I'm going to be giving away to all of our Patreon subscribers. And I'll do that every single week. I have several issues to, to be giving away. So if you want to be a part of that, we, we will do giveaways for that as well. Uh, basically, we just want to give back to people that support us. We're not looking to make money. We want to get Omnis, review them, and then give back. So there you folks have it. Thank you very much for watching. And until next week, power is yours.